just Epsom after I was brought to you by the Jockey Club. I've actually got my Jockey Club branded jacket on today and yeah i've I'm got sure. it as well we're rapping i know we? I've got, i feel like i need to introduce you you don't need much of an introduction i feel You're, like i probably do no i feel like you are just a fascinating sight for all our viewers this afternoon but this is rosie tapner and we're going to talk a lot more let's talk about you for a second oh, gosh, okay. passing on the emphasis you love your horse racing. Oh, you ride okay. out. I actually found out an amazing stat about Rosie. She rides out with Charlie Hill, so it's very relevant to obviously the flat season now. You go there a couple of times a week. Yeah, two or three times a week I go there. But um, Rosie travels from London and has to leave it for something a.m. in the morning, which I think is quite frankly ridiculous, even though I do ride racehorses myself and love them. But that's an early start. It's, it's an early start for sure. But it's quite a fun start because I know that I'm going to ride racehorses at Charlie Hills, which is just epic. Um, so I'm kind of used to the early starts now. But I know you're not quite as used to those early starts. Chris, what time did you get up this morning? 10 30 actually but i stayed in a local hotel i wasn't doing anything on the opening show with itv so i had like a light my car was booked for 10 30 as well. i snooze my alarm five times don't tell anyone i'm not i'm not much of a morning person but i'm excited to be what a day's racing we've had today oh it's just been absolutely amazing and it's my first time back on a race course since march 2020 so to be here for the kazoo derby festival is just incredible it's a bit of a treat and another thing i'm going to get onto why we've got this massive it's not massive I'm, it's, it's a tree believe it or not i would call this a plant but that is a tree there is a reason that is sat on the table we'll get onto that in just a moment but charity races you've rode in some charity races in your time i've rode in one finished fifth i think you've done a lot better than me haven't you i don't think i've got a better placing but i've uh, i've done three charity races two at goodwood the magnolia cup and one at ascot so i do feel like i may have been on a better race course than you oh no york york's the governor york's my favorite oh. it's one of my favorite race courses in the country it's pretty good but to go through ascot and to go into that parade ring and actually get to sit on a horse yeah. is something unbelievable so special just very briefly just tell our audience there might be people watching this who actually want to ride in a charity race don't kind of know what to do or i mean it's a pretty much a dream for a lot of people it's good fun isn't it oh if you ever get the chance to ride in the charity race you must absolutely do it i did say to you earlier i absolutely hated the first three weeks of training these horses are strong and it's a different beast yeah um but as soon as you start kind of getting yourself into it and sort of i used to pretend that i was frankie de Tory going up the gallops and i somehow made me hold the horses getting a um, mindset yeah and now since that three years later i'm i keep going back and Rose is going to swim the channel, which is a good because it's for charity. But for me, I've mental. Yeah, I mean, in a team, I'm not doing it all at once. Oh, so you don't just swim on your own. No. So and you have you... breaks, though, don't you? Sort of, yeah. Oh, but you okay. sit on a boat for about 14 hours. No, it's still good. So, oh, very good. I don't know. Well, hopefully. Let's see. I hope I don't sink. I'm <laughs> impressed. What an intro. Yeah. Well, you've asked me a lot of questions, but rumour has it today, and I'm actually genuinely quite upset about this. Go on. You've never seen Friends. No, they're all that friends. Never seen friends. That friends reunion was all popping through my Twitter feed the other day. And I just thought, well, I've never watched it, but I know what it's like. So I'm a massive Entourage fan. If you know Entourage, like you'll get what I'm saying here. I'm jealous of anybody who hasn't watched Entourage before because they get to watch it from scratch over again. But and then someone tweeted me going, I'm actually jealous you've never watched Friends before because oh, it means you can so enjoy jealous. it. So I the 99 minutes of that reunion, I was in floods the whole way through. Floods, the fact that you floods. had floods of tears. Oh, tears. It was amazing. So, a, I'm a bit of a friends geek. We we're total opposites. Never seen it. Total geek about that. <laughs> anyway. I, I'm glad you said floods of tears, right? <laughs> Jesus, I didn't know where you were going with that. Well, there might have been a nice boy on there. Was it Joey? Is it someone like that? Yeah, yeah, Joey. Yeah, well done. Good. Joey, good You've actually chosen the right guy. It's, well. one, it's one of them things, isn't it? Friends is like a it's a big, big show, isn't it? So you kind of know all the people. Let's talk racing. Yes, let's it was, get back to it. Obviously, today was the, the Kazoo Oaks. Now, what an amazing race. Oh, my God. Let's just show you guys, if you've just got in from the day and you haven't caught up with the race, I'm going to show you the VT now. Just enjoy this. So running down towards the most famous bend in racing Tattenham corner are they going to come wide and head over to the stands rail it's mystery angel that still just leads the way to sherbet lemon and then driven along is ladger con dubai fountain then saffron beach sayada's on the right they are coming stand side and mystery angel has skipped two or three lengths clear but the others are beginning to chase very hard mystery angel gets across to the rail a buffeting match there between snowfall and the fading sherbet lemon here's santa barbara trying to come through from the 
the back of the field, but it's Snowfall who travels up well for Frankie de Tori and just goes on now from Mystery Angel and Snowfall is quickly away in the Kazoo Oaks and it's Frankie de Tori again for Aid O'Brien. He won the 1,000 guineas on Mother Earth. He's going to win the Oaks by a street here. A wide margin. Some princess was by 12 lengths many years ago. This could break the record. Snowfall wins the Kazoo Oaks. By a wide margin, by a mile. Mystery Angel in second. Third was Divinely. And then Saver Forest in fourth. Santa Barbara fifth, Ocean Road and Tiona. Well, as you'd have heard in the commentary, it did break a record. 16 lengths, Snowfall. Now, that was mightily impressive. We're going to show you an amazing video in just a moment, but let's just discuss that for two seconds. That was an absolute steering job. For anybody who would want to understand the terminology of a steering job, I mean, we could have rode that winner. Yeah, Frankie actually came up to me afterwards and said that was so easy, any of you could have sampled that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think he's been quite modest there. He probably did more than he's saying, but it just looked unbelievable. Sit, kick, and he just had the best time. And oh, it was mate. unbelievable to see a horse go that far, especially on a track like this. This is a, yeah. tr a tricky track as well. And to go 16 lengths clear um, is just incredible. Yeah, to win a classic in that style as well. Something interesting about that race, Frankie actually said, initially said to Wally Ball on ITV just before the race, before the previous race prior to that, that he was going to stay near side and not come across the track. And then everybody in the race beforehand come across the track uh, to this side, to the top side of the track. And then obviously Frankie actually checked, must have changed his tactics or, or he was either bluffing with Ollie. I think either he was way. just finding it so easy. He just went with it. No, I just <laughs> go, went with the flow. So we caught up, both of us caught up with uh, Frankie after his glorious win in the Oaks earlier. And this is what he had to say, full of life as ever. Come on! <laughs> Frankie, when one Philly leaves your life, another arrives. Unbelievable. It's not a bad life, is I it? I know. I mean, when I woke up this morning, I thought, oh, I've got a funny feeling I got a little bit of a chance, but I didn't expect to win by 16 lengths. <laughs> Steering oh job, wasn't it? Oh, my God. I could, have got easy. I could have gone round again. I think you could have. Amazing. She's a very, very good filly. I mean, the world is her oyster now. She could go to a King George or an Ark, so... She, she's really exciting yeah, for she's the future. Very, yes. okay. Can you describe that in three words? What that was like crossing the line, 16 lengths well, everyone. The, the best feeling was when I was coming around Tottenham Court and everybody was beat. It was like playing cowboys and Indians and I was the cowboy <laughs> of the gun. You know? And I was just went through it like hot knife through butter and I was unbelievable. And I had the race one, four out. And then, uh, you know, I had the fence and she galloped away. I, I had the uh, luck to to listen to the crowd clapping for once after 18 months. So think, it was it was very emotional. It was good. I think that's got to be your, probably potentially your easiest winner in a, a classic. Doubt. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, enable won by five. She won by 16. Yeah. Oh, honestly. Absolute steering Amazing. job. So, no. uh, the problem can is I ask that, you the hardest question then? Got, Snowfall or Enable? Well, I still got to stick with Enable. You know, she's done it all. Now she still have to do it, but she's on the right path. Frankie, one final word tomorrow. John Leeper. Oh. Do you think the do you think the weather and the ground slightly changed with Hammer? He's obviously one on good ground. New market last time out. Listen, uh, you know, he's gonna play big emphasis on the stamina tomorrow, but he's gonna be more gluey tomorrow. He's an unknown quantity, you know, he's done nothing wrong. Some horses in the race have a better profile than him. But listen, we're gonna give it a best shot and it'd be a, a great story if he does it. It's got the right pilot on board, isn't it? Come on. Come on, look at that. Good boy. <laughs> Tell you what, he was on great form today, wasn't he? He was a biceps on it. I think he loves having a crowd back. I think he's so buzzing today. And how good was it to have even just the 4,000? It just made such a difference to have 100%. someone here. It's just nice having a few a bit of atmosphere. I think Frankie obviously plays up to that. That's what, you know, if you're a top class sportsman, I'm not saying I am at all <laughs> because I'm not, but I imagine he's a top class sportsman. You just want to be in front of crowds, yeah. play up to it. Especially for a classic like that. To mm. come into a crowd is so much. Like, there's so much more atmosphere than obviously yeah. coming into nothing. Well, like, <laughs> I saw an interview as well with Frank. He, he described himself as like, it's almost Phil Mickelson S. He obviously won a major, Phil Mickelson at the grand age. And Frankie's obviously winning classic still. So they're very, a lot of similarities. A lot of similarities. Um, do you think we should talk about the elephant in the room? The, uh, yeah. the tree? This is a, so this is a, this is actually an oak tree. It is an oak tree, isn't it? it? Is an, uh, believe it or not, Chris, this is actually going to turn into a tree. I know you were a bit baffled by that earlier, that this is actually a tree. It's from Mill Farm Plants, right? Yeah, so these are actually awarded then to the winning connections. I imagine trainer, jockey and owners get one of these after they've won the oaks. If you want to plant that, this, believe it or not, this blew my mind. This will grow into an oak, like a massive tree. 
and he, all it is is in a pot of soil at the minute. I find that fascinating. Do you know where trees start from though? Because this is where they yeah. start. So every tree starts like this. Yeah, and I didn't I actually yeah. know that. <laughs> where did you think trees came from? I don't know. I just I don't know. But now I know that I guys. I thought I know fruit grows like small and grows I think up. You should but... stick to racing, Chris. Yeah, you any facts not. about that tree? Um, yeah, I do actually. This can live up to three hundred years, which is pretty amazing. Um, three hundred years. Three hundred. Well, the oak tree. Yeah. And then what happens to it? I'm assuming it just falls. <laughs> Or just dies. I have to be honest, that facts are not that good. Okay. Um, and one other fact um, is they're more likely to be hit by lightning than any other tree of the same height. Why? I don't know why. Maybe it has metal in it. It must. I don't know. Okay, it must attract tree, lightning. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of, um, no, I was smelling it. I've never smelt an oak tree before. I thought it was going to smell like a flower, but it doesn't. No, no. Talking of style, right? Frankie, obviously, very stylish. We had the Style Awards. Well, actually, hang on. Bear me two seconds. Do you know who we're joined by? We got the big man himself. I call him the. I'll call him the big man. We'll go with that. The one below the big man. We're going to be joined by Joseph O'Brien. Now, Joseph is extremely busy, and I think he's joining us on Zoom call now. Joseph, can you hear us? Hi, Chris. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Of course I can. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Are you okay? Yeah, very good. Uh, I've been called a lot of things uh, uh, over, over <laughs> the last uh, number of years, but that's, that, that, that might be a first. <laughs> All right. Well, that, well, that's a, well, that's a compliment, Joseph. Like, let's not, um, we're not going to keep you too long tonight. Well, you've actually got runners it down Royal this evening. I think, have you just had a runner? Yeah, just finished second. So uh, uh, the favourite one, well, but we were pleased with our Phillies run. And then you got a few later on in America, am I right? You're saying? Yeah, yeah, we've two two tonight in America. So uh, uh, yeah, looking forward to watching them. The work never stops. Now, for everybody, anybody who doesn't know, Joseph, this is going to be a very chilled chat this afternoon or this evening. But Camelot 2012, that was the first trainer and son combination. Let me just ask you a quick question. You obviously rode Camelot to victory in the derby. How? How is that compared to now training horses? How do you, yeah. how's the comparison? That was a very special day, Chris. Um, um, Camelot was a short price favourite and there was quite a bit of pressure on. So he was an exceptional horse and it was quite an easy ride really for a finish. Um, but a very special day. I feel a lot more pressure training horses. Um, yeah. uh, you know, when you have to sit back and, and, and watch the race and it's out of your control. Um, uh, it, it, it's, uh, you, 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 I feel a lot more nervous and much more pressure uh, than what we ever did riding. So, uh, but it's, it's a great privilege to be able to have a runner in the race tomorrow. Yeah, why, why, yeah, why is that? That's quite an interesting point. I presume, personally, in my head, I presume you would actually feel more pressure doing this steering because it's kind of your responsibility to get a feel off the horse in a race and judge it on instinct and actually take those things into account as opposed to being given instruction. So what, why, why is that so much more pressure you feel as a trainer? I think as a, as a, as a jockey, um, like you say, uh, you're in control of the situation. And I think when you're in control of the situation, you have to back yourself and you have to block out the nerves and, and uh, have the confidence to perform. Whereas uh, as a trainer, it's completely out of your hands. So, so your work is done and all you can do is sit back and watch. And I think when you lose, con lose that bit of control, that's where the nervousness comes in. Yeah, Joseph, can I ask actually, as a trainer, if your horse loses, do you feel like you can actually just blame it on the jockey? So actually not that you've <laughs> well, got no pressure on you as a well, trainer, because that actually you can just blame it. <laughs> well, some sometimes it is the jockey's fault, but normally it's, <laughs> normally normally the trainer has to take the slack. Uh, um, but um I, I I think I'm Having rode and having been there, I think I'm a little bit easier on jockeys than some people. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, but I try not to be too hard on jockeys because I understand that, you know, uh, situations, uh, the situation changes and you have to make decisions on the track that yeah. maybe you hadn't planned. Well, everything is a learning, a learning curve, isn't it? Every ride, I imagine a jockey learns something from. But let's talk about your father, 40 British Classics. Now, that is matched a record today. Tomorrow he could surpass that in the derby. What a man. Unbelievable. Yeah, incredible. Incredible, Chris. Um, I mean, Snowfall today was, uh, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen a more impressive uh, uh, winner, that lone classic winner, um, yeah, uh, the yeah. way she sprinted away from the field. And, uh, you know, that has had an incredible run of of uh, time of over over years uh, uh, yeah. with the support of Coolmore um, and uh, he's, he's obviously they've performed year and year out um, uh, at the top level. 
Do you ever feel that uh, pressure to actually live up to your dad? And and I know you've also trained some incredible winners, but you know, do you ever feel pressure to live up to that standard? Yeah, I've I've long given up uh, 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 trying to <laughs> trying to compete at that level. So so we we do we do the best with uh, with the stock that we have, and we're very lucky to have good horses. And uh, wherever that leaves us, then we'll be content. Hundred percent. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those. You just there's no point even trying to live up to that, Joseph, because that's a <laughs> <laughs> that's an, yeah, I mean, you're gonna you get spend the lifetime trying, and you probably won't. Chris, Chris clearly just, has no faith in it, you. Let's just have it out, mate. Right. Mm. Oh, no one can. He's, he's the goat, isn't he? Okay, but you, goat you might have a go at the derby tomorrow, though, Joseph. Talk to us about your horse in the derby tomorrow. Yeah, we, we will have a go anyway. That's for sure. Um, uh, he's a he's a nice colt. He's been progressive. He was unlucky not to be second to Bolshoi Bali yeah. last time. 100%. And, and um, you know, I think he has a good chance of running in the first five. The ground is a bit of an unknown. Um, uh, but if he handles the going, you know, I think he has a live each way chance. Yeah, I'm going to say straight now he's a 33 or 28 to one shot. I'm telling you now. I said to you this, to you this earlier. This horse is not this horse is not a 28 to one shot in anything. Like you said, he'd have got so much closer to your mm. dad's horse in the last race. He's obviously squeezed out. I was actually watching Southern Lights closely, which is obviously the horse you train tomorrow in the Derby. And I thought, I just, yeah, it, it was just, he yeah. ran a better race than finishing sixth or seven. Yeah, yeah. As clear as that. I, I think he, I think he could have been second, Chris, you know, with a, with a, with a clear run. And that puts him, that puts him in the mix. Um, and that, that certainly puts him uh, uh, earning, having earned a shot at the race. So that's yeah. what we're going to do De- tomorrow. Yeah, I definitely think he's one to keep an eye on. And, Obviously, Bolshoi Ballet for your for your father. I mean, he's got to be the horse to beat. Nice short price favourite. The record could be set. Forty one classics, British classics tomorrow. I mean, it could be a shootout between the two of you. Well, that that'd be nice. Um, uh, but yeah, he, he obviously is the one to beat. Max Sweeney, obviously, uh, in the in the Guineas run at Takara brings a soft yeah. ground form into it. Um, you know that 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 could have that could tell tomorrow, depending on what happens tonight. But it's almost certainly going to be on the slow side. So um, it'll be interesting to see, but uh, I'm a big Balchai Ballet fan. He's been hugely impressive this season. And um, um, yeah, if if I don't win, I hope he does. Yeah, 100%. Um, what's it like, Joseph? You've gone from being jockey and for your father, trainer, and now so you're, you were a team, and now you're effectively competitive against each <laughs> other. What's that like? Do you, are you really competitive against each other in particular? We we are very competitive and uh, with my brother also, but at the same time, you know what happens on the track always stays on the track, and uh, and you know we, we always have a good relationship off off course. So so uh, yeah, we 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 are very competitive, but at the same time, we know that you know some days uh, some days you're on top of the world, and some days you're you're dragged yeah. right down to earth. So that's that's the great thing about sport in general. I was going to say it's the beauty of life. That is the ups and downs what come with it. In uh, how will you celebrate? Like we we need to know a bit about you, Joseph. How will you celebrate if you if you uh, train the winner in the derby tomorrow? God, I don't know, Chris. Uh, I'm not <laughs> I'm not I'm not a big uh, I'm not I'm not a big one for celebrations. But well, before COVID, we always had like a, a barbecue or a, a party in the yard. Uh, amongst the lads in the yard because they're the people you know that have worked very hard uh, uh, behind the scenes so that's what we normally would do um, so maybe we might have something to, of that of that uh, uh, nature oh, if we can get our head in front. Joseph other people do think they know how you will celebrate because Connor Moore has done a great impression of you and I don't know if you've seen this or not but we are going to play this on a VT right now for any of you who haven't seen this this is brilliant. Yes yeah, Veronica has a really good chance for the triumph um, he's a great horse and you know I don't know what I'd do if he won. I, I'd go crazy so I would. Um, I'd probably stay up till about half past nine drinking cans of Fanta. Um, as you can see I can barely contain myself. Um, I do think it's very sad though that uh, myself and everyone in the yard won't get a chance to celebrate any winners you know by heading down the pub for a few Fantas. True of an impression. Um, as you can see <laughs> You know, I've I've literally I've literally had to I, I can't order Fanta anywhere anymore <laughs> because everyone starts laughing if I'm with anyone. <laughs> so, so well, we got some... I've had to I've had to change my, my drink of choice. <laughs> well, what is the drink of choice now? Oh it's not very it's not very adventurous. Um uh, a sprite or something very, very uh, chilled. I, I'm always uh, I don't drink at all, uh, uh, Chris, so so um um it's never anything too adventurous. 
No, good man. Well, you don't need to, but you get the adrenaline of the racing. You don't need the adrenaline of the alcohol. <laughs> so we're going to do some we do some quick fire questions with you now. A lot of light-hearted fun. You can take it away, Rosie. I'll take it or start it. What do you prefer watching on telly if you have any time to do that? Love Island or ITV Racing? Careful. ITV Racing. What well, you prefer? Be, but but I have I have to say that uh, um, you know um, I I do I have I have watched Love Island in the past. Uh, <laughs> I can't, did you watch I Chris on it? I, I did watch Chris on it. I did watch Chris on it. It was a it was a good was a good series to be fair, Joseph. I mean, arguably the best series. So it was, yeah, it was the best. Hey, arguably the best series. He says I've watched that. He's watched every he's series. Only watched one series. <laughs> yeah. He's the only one he knows. He's seen every series. <laughs> <laughs> he's going. It's arguably the best. Series. I like this one, but that one, yeah, weighing them up. Um, oh, and then quick well, questions. the next one was Fanta or Coke, but clearly no. it obviously was Fanta. Yeah, but not anymore. No Sprite. <laughs> um, Joseph, if you were on a desert island, who would you take, mum or dad? Oh God, um, um, <laughs> that is a, that is a difficult question. I think I'd have to take mum. Um, um, mum would, mum would, mum would make sure that we'd survive when it would really, you know, when <laughs> things would really be desperate. Mum would, mum would uh, uh, pull through. There's a fair chance your dad would probably still be training winners on a desert island. <laughs> probably. <laughs> He'd probably find some crabs and start yeah. racing them against each other. <laughs> well, your favourite sibling then? Oh God, uh, that's that's a very unfair question. But um, uh, <laughs> I, have one, I have one, I have one brother, so so uh, and two sisters, so I don't think I'll have to get the call there. Ah, uh, yeah, Donica, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Melbourne Cup or Kazoo Derby? Kazoo Derby, hundred percent. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Uh, Rosie Tapner or Margot Robbie? Uh, uh, Rosie Tapner, uh, Chris, of course. Because she sat by me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. Uh, uh, Kevin Blake or Luke Carvey? Oh, God. Um, um, it has to be Kevin Blake. You know, I, 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 I'm a big fan of Luke. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I uh, often when... We need a good laugh. We get up some of his, uh, some of his. Uh, I think they showed a good uh, a few clips one night and get in um, uh, of clip of Luke's riding career. So, so that that always get we always get a good laugh out of that. But Kevin is a good help to me here, and um, uh, he's a he's a big asset to the team. Well, yeah, exactly. Obviously, you work alongside Kevin as well. Kevin Blake, he does a lot for you guys. What's he actually like? Because we've had him on, we've actually had him on this very show, this Jockey Club um, show at Cheltenham, and he was. I know we can only see the top half of you, Joseph, but he rocked up in like a shirt and underneath he had absolutely nothing on. A pair of boxers. <laughs> well, he might have had track bottoms, actually. I, yeah, that, I can't imagine that was a very pretty sight, Chris. No, it wasn't. We got him to stand up. You, you've got trousers on tonight, haven't you? I have a pair of tracks, tracksuit, tracksuit on, Chris. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to say. <laughs> I mean, Chris, <laughs> no one can see below where you are. So you've got anything on tonight? Yeah, well, of course. I <laughs> Stezzy, you just flirt. No, you, no, You've I'll... got stuff out on telly before, so I'm just double checking. You're not doing it yeah, again you tonight. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, I want to just wish you now the very best of luck from both myself and Rosie. It's going to be an amazing day tomorrow. Obviously, if you don't train the winner, hopefully your father can and uh, we can make history. But it's going to be an amazing day. What a day's racing we had today. And yeah, I mean, just looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Thanks very much, Chris and uh, Rosie. And uh, yeah, I might see you tomorrow. Good luck. Good luck tonight with the runners abroad, mate. Thank, thank oh, you. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Joseph O'Brien. Great, isn't he? He's so lovely. Isn't so he? much fun. Yeah, I'm glad he chose me over Margot Robbie. I mean, he had to say it, but you yeah, know. no, we're both are great. Yeah. But, but that's like one of those things. I mean, you want to, I know, I, like, he would probably still have chosen you, but it's like when you put on the spot like that. All right. No, I'm not no, sorry. No, 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 don't no. worry about it, Chris. It's fine. He probably would have chosen IT Racing definitely all the time. You know, <laughs> it's fine. He did. Um, do you see how he tried to say, oh, I, I, I did watch your series. And then he was like, oh, it was the best one out of all. He's watched them all. <laughs> God, I love him. He's some boy. I haven't watched any of the series. So oh, I'm no. afraid I didn't actually no, see you right. on it. But that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's Doesn't fine. Matter. No, it's fine. It's um, the, it's how good hub. was Connor Moore's impression, though? Yeah, very good. That's great, isn't it? Fancy. He's actually can't order Fanta now. I know. It's gutting, really. No, it's quite, it's quite Might have to ship it in himself instead of actually going and order it. A lot of the jockeys, to be fair to them, um, or trainers, they don't actually drink. No. Well, I mean, probably like, quite a good thing, considering they're racing on horses, yeah. probably. My friend drink. Richie doesn't. He's like, tea tell never been drunk. Amazing. What about you? Like a drink? Yeah, I do. I've, um, <laughs> I'm a bit dehydrated. I'm looking for my water. My water girl's <laughs> left me. She's, uh, she's usually here, yeah, kicking Chris on. Chris needs but... his own water girl. 
Right, let's talk style though. Right, talk to me. Well, style awards. Yeah, well, we did have the style awards today. Jessica Ray, who was the um, official milliner here today, and also. No, milliner. What's a milliner? A mil- <laughs> milliner. It's been an education. I we, today, had a guys. we had another. It's been an education. We had another millionaire. First of all, I've we had Aidan O'Brien. Thought we had, Aiden O'Brien. we had another millionaire. First of all, I've had to teach him how to grow a tree, and now we're talking milliners. A milliner makes hats. So oh, you know so all the girls maker. with a hat maker. Yeah, yeah fascinating. Yeah. Wow. yeah, well done. Yeah, you're learning so well. It's just brilliant. I've never um, called him a millionaire. No, no, a milliner. I'm that. I know. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it's it. Nice, though. Um, nice. Anyway, happy. back to it. Jessica Ray was also on the judging panel today for the Style Awards. And um, there were some amazing people, also some not greatly dressed people, but you know, they're always going to be those as well. Um, and she also <laughs> gave us her thoughts on your outfit. No, too. she didn't. Yeah, she did. Should we have a look at the VT? Yeah, please. I am here with the Kazoo Derby Festival official milliner and style judge, Jess. Jess, how was today? Incredible, absolutely incredible. It's so lovely to be back at Epsom Racing after such a long year. Finally, we can get out. It doesn't matter that the sun's not shining today. It's been a brilliant day. We're out and about. And this is a bit of a dream come true for you, isn't it? Because you grew up in Epsom. Yep, Epsom, born and raised. I literally live a throne stow away from here. Um, Throwstone? That is a stone stone, I think. Yeah, throwstone. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's fine. Um, no, so I, I grew up literally round the corner from here and I love the race course. I, I love everything about it. It's great, isn't it? Let's talk style. Mm-hmm. Chris Hughes wears them. Tom Marcon wears them. Sliders. Cool or not? Oh, not cool. Definitely even worse when people wear socks with them. Well, Tom was wearing tights with them earlier. Mm, not cool. Not a good look. Cool. Talking of Chris, though, you've seen his outfit today. What do you think about it? Because we're, we're a bit umming and ahhing as whether it works. It's interesting. Um, I'm not sure on the belt, if I'm really honest. The belt just, perhaps just get rid of the belt. If you can't find a nice belt, ditch the ugly belt. I think there is a story with the belt, so we will ask Chris on that later. Um, now, you have been judging today. Uh, talk to me about the winners. Oh, do you know, the winners, I actually chose a couple to win the best dressed. They, their outfits are absolutely beautiful. I don't think they were planned to match impeccably together. It just kind of happened. Um, the lovely lady that, that won, it's her first time racing and I'm absolutely blown away that she's never been to a race course before. And she's managed to get the style completely on board straight away. Yeah, absolutely. The colour, everything, the gloves, the detail, the handbag, even her umbrella, she has thought her outfit through. So lots of people do think their outfit through. What's sort of the worst dressed person you've seen? What makes someone the worst dressed? Uh, When people forget elegance. Racing is about being elegant. And sometimes that gets forgotten about. Um, So I just try and remind people, just just remember elegance. Well, your winners are very elegant. So shall we bring the winners in? Come on in, bring it in. (laughs) Umbrellas down, wet, horrible day, isn't it? (laughs) You both look amazing. And this is your first time at a race course races before so this I mean what a way to start hopefully going over the next couple of years but um thanks to him he's sort of he's uh, he's got me hooked now so brilliant and how long did it take you uh, to pick out these outfits you about five minutes um <laughs> me oh you can ask my mum a couple of months it was sort of trial and error I wanted to get it absolutely bang on because ever since I was a kid I've loved fashion from the 40s and 50s so I really wanted that to influence today so Grace Kelly Audrey Hepburn all of them so well Jess was saying your accessories kind of made the outfit so you definitely got that right and what's it like winning as a couple today oh it's, it's crazy I mean as as Abby said, it's like it's a total accident that I'm here. I'm actually quite a big racing fan, so I was here for that and sort of showed up. Tried to look good, obviously, but yeah, um, it's lovely. As I say, it's, it's one of the happiest accidents ever. So, uh, yeah. well, guys, massive congratulations! Enjoy your prizes and enjoy the rest of the day in the racing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Your belt? No, the belt was not. The belt isn't mine. The belt I wore today. I actually had a message. Well, there's a story to this, guys. Yeah, I, I needed a belt this morning. I didn't have one, so I needed one. So I've rung around a few people. This is the reason I got up late as well. I was still looking for a belt. I had to borrow one of our runner, Wills. Will Dowie, great guy. It's his belt. It's not, admittedly, it ain't a great belt. 
But you thought it was great until she told you it wasn't. You yeah, know, I did to be fair. I thought I did a job. <laughs> you can't have no belt though. If you're wearing no belt with your shirt tucked Charles in, is just gonna come straight down. Looks a bit silly, but yeah, I thought I looked, I thought I looked like she's done me there though, isn't she? A Socks bit. as large as well. She double whammed me because that's what I wear every day. And off air, she didn't particularly love your outfit today. She's just being somewhat kinder on air. No, she didn't sound kind to me. <laughs> anyway, back well, to it then. Yeah, back to it. Let's talk talking of um a lovely discussion. Oh, yes. Me and you caught up with Holly Doyle and Tom Marquand, obviously the loved up couple. And uh, we're going to have a little look at their VT. We had a chat with them earlier to discuss Derby chance as well. So let's have a look what they said. So we're joined by Holly and Tom now, two very successful jockeys in their rights. Just before we start, we need to just check out Tom Marquand's feet. Look at, look at these. He's got the sliders on. He's got tights on as well, which you can't actually see probably visibly through my camera. But what's the, uh, what's the crack with the tights? Uh, Boots are too wet to get back on, but uh, everyone wears tights underneath because yeah. it stops the friction sticking to your legs. Stops the friction as well. Yeah. He's lying, he's lying. <laughs> I just like wearing them. We've we seen you guys earlier actually on, on ITV Racing. You were walking the course together, had the umbrellas out, smiling. For, you, you were two, probably the most happiest jockeys, I reckon, on the circuit. You're always happy. The rain was coming down, and I was thinking, ah, oh, they're enjoying themselves. How's the weather conditions holding up? Bit grim, isn't it? Yeah, it's not great. Obviously, everyone wants a sunny. Derby Oaks sort of couple of days and yeah. it's a bit of a letdown but look it's good horse racing and it doesn't take away from the occasion too much but yeah. um, it would be nice if it's sunny obviously. And Holly's just joined us we'll probably show a little bit of footage as well Holly um, success. Yeah, Tommy that was easy. Yeah steering job. Steering <laughs> um, job. Yeah it's jumped well towed me into the race with everyone the better he's just a core specialist and got through the ground which is bonus. You looked over your shoulder and Tom you were nowhere to be seen yeah. unfortunately. Yeah my lad really struggled. <laughs> That's usually so. the case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but tomorrow Holly you're at Musselburgh I believe. Mm. Riding winners up there? I hope so yeah. I'd like to think I could have a winner or two. I'd be um, a bit disappointed yeah. if I don't. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to go yeah. not for a few winners yeah. And Tom you obviously in the derby you ride you spit for Andrew Bowling. A bit of an outside chance but exciting yeah. to have the ride. Yeah massive. Um, kind of, uh, with, the, with all the trials, it's a matter of opinions. You won the Chester Bars, which normally has a pretty good record into the yeah, derby. Three. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's a good test of a horse. And, you know, he showed that day he stayed. Actually, with the rain coming, it's a, probably a blessing for him because yeah. he showed he handled softer conditions really nicely. And um, look, obviously, for the same connections with Amadal Shakers, he yeah. sat and she's second last year. So, um, really looking forward to it. He's gone through hell and back with quarantines and whatnot to be here this year. So, 100%. hopefully, it's all worth it. Well, fingers crossed. And then a few quick questions. If you could be on any horse in the derby, I know this is going to be a bit of a difficult question for you, Tom, but if you could choose any horse to be on, what what, what do you think would be the favourable selection tomorrow? It's the Irish horse, Bradshaw Ballet. Yeah. Like, to me, it was, it, we actually watched it together. Like, he, impressive. He's the only horse that you watch the derby trial and for. Probably send the derby winner. Yeah. Um, like, obviously, there's a lot of trials and, and other things can happen. And, you know, now we've got Brown coming into and things like that. So, yeah. it can't change. But, he, he, he just had that um, stuff yeah, yeah. stuck one. Have a few Holly same? Same as yeah, Now a little side subject. If you're in a tight finish riding a tight finish, who do you not want to see on your shoulder or who do you not want to be eyeballing in the tight finish jockey wise? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's, yeah, there's not many, but yeah, there's just, there'd, be, there'd be a couple. Ryan, Ryan, Holly, I don't know. But I used to always think Jim Fortune. I know he's obviously yeah. right now, but he was so strong in a finish. Yeah, well, I can say Holly, you're really one of, if not the best, in a finish. Get the best out. Always get that little bit extra. She's so modest. She'll be like, I don't know. She goes, I know. She goes, I know I'm the best, but I don't know. Who do you, who do you fear in a finish? Um, obviously Tom. He's strong in there. Same as Tom Ryan, you wouldn't want to be outside him in a tight finish, yeah. 100%. Different class. And then the Kazoo Derby or the Melbourne Cup? Derby. Derby. Derby yeah. all day. Sorry, Australian fans. No, it's alright. Right. I'm never coming back. <laughs> Keep it, keeping it British. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now going on to some non racing questions and a bit more like couples questions. I think I know who I'd have my money on for this, but who would win in an arm wrestle out for two of you? <laughs> yeah? Have you tried this out? <laughs> 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 uh, but Tom, I hear you're a bit of a barbecue king. Uh, if you were going to cook us anything, what dish would you cook us? Uh, I found a new place for me the other day, and it's uh, I got a rib on the bone from them the other day, and it's pretty good on the barbecue. Is that local butchers? Uh, it's actually ex-dairy beef. Oh, okay. 
Nice. Rib eye on the bone. Does it taste good, Holly? Yeah, Holly's yeah. yeah. the it's judge. <laughs> Who's the chef out of the two of you, actually? Uh, yeah. Holly, do you ever cook? <laughs> I can cook, but he, uh, well, when I do, he annoys me and tries to take it. When you do, is it inedible? No, no, it's yours is good. Oh, I thought you said edible. Yeah. You can't cook, I just enjoy it. Perfect, perfect couple there. You don't get many of these, but if you do have a day off, what is your ideal day off as a couple? I'm like playing with this barbecue. Oh, what day? Not bitter. Just chilling out. When we were off, we don't like, do a lot really yeah. when we're off because we're so tired. Last I was going to say, you got we went out on the bikes a lot when yeah. we actually had time. You got to appreciate the days off, yeah. like in terms of actually doing nothing yeah. because and it's if usually you... one day, so it's like you can't seen... go away or anything. No, so exactly, yeah. Make the most of what exactly. Um, okay, so we know Chris has done Love Island, um, and we're wondering whether he'll do Naked Attraction. Oh, out of the two of those, what would you two do if you had to choose? <laughs> Love Island, it's a bit of yeah, it'd be a couple of weeks off. That's, that's seven weeks off. Yeah, Do you reckon we'd be a sweet to change couple at any point? <laughs> what do you prefer watching? Do you watch Naked Attraction? Uh, yeah. He, he loved, loved no, Lion, he loved yeah. More yeah. Lion, yeah. Yeah. it down. Yeah. That's our ideal uh, day off. Yeah, exactly. Um, Desert Island, you can take one jockey. You're not allowed to take each other. Who would you take and why? Fat swans eating first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's not many fat jockeys on. Uh, oh, God, I don't know. Who'd be the best company to be with? Oh. Naylor. Yeah, Naylor. 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 I'm sorry, Naylor. 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 Go and get wet, Chris. <laughs> He's like, get out of the action. Right, okay. Get Just wet. double checking that. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Tom Marquand, Holly Dor, they're two great Aren't guys. They two are racing's great ambassadors. Yeah. And that is all we got time for till tomorrow. We're back. We are back. Derby day, baby. It's going to be a good one. I'm actually joined by Ed Chamberlain, who obviously fronts ITV Racing, does Ed very good. And we've got a lovely, we're going to have a lovely VT with Tomo. Now, Tom is talking about Shergar. It's how many years on from Shergar? 40 years since he won the derby. 40 years on. And then we're going to get him on Zoom as well, because Tomo, believe it or not, was actually involved within the whole Shergar episode, the experience. So that's going to be fascinating. I promise you, you don't actually want to miss that. It's going to be very, very interesting, something which I need to learn more about and I'm going to learn more about tomorrow. I just want to say cheers from all the Jockey Club. Thank you for watching. Have you got any impressions before we go? Oh, I knew you were going to throw that in last minute. So we were earlier doing some impressions and I, I slightly mentioned that I can do a pretty good dolphin impression. A dolphin? Yeah. Go on. You want it? <coughs> yeah? That can you sounds, do it? That's unbelievable. No, I can't do that. <laughs> go on, give it a go. Do it once more. It also That's has to come with the well. face, so don't just do that. No, yeah, you have to pull it. You have to pull it. No, I can't do that. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to be hearing that in my sleep tonight. Right. Um, yeah, we're going to leave you with some footage from today. Guys, enjoy. Join us tomorrow again for Epsom After Hours. That was good fun. And I'll see you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Chris. Job done. Bye. Pleasure. Bye. Welcome to a very soggy Epsom on Oaks Afternoon. At the six furlong start, they're off and away. And Oscula with all guns blazing for the George Bowie team racing up towards the line. And Oscula wins the woodcut. Corazon Espinado takes it up again at his favourite race course. As they race up towards the line, Corazon Espinado for a fourth win on Epsom Downs. And they're off for this Coral Coronation Cup. Al Arzi gaining all the time. Jim Crowley just switches his whip because the horse is hanging down the camber. On the far side and fighting back. And Pile Driver has gone up to win. For the Kazoo handicap over a mile and a quarter. And away they go. Blue Cup restrained in the early stages. The pace was strong, and he's the one that's finishing off. And Blue Cup careers clear to win the Kazoo Handicap.
the 2021 Kazoo Oaks, and they're off. And it's Frankie Victoria again for Aiden Grime. He's going to win the Oaks by a street here at White Margin. Sun Princess was by 12 lengths many years ago. This could break the record. Snowfall wins for Kazoo Oaks by a mile. But it's Memento that now goes on again from Legal Attack in the hands of Holly Doyle. It is Memento who wins. As they race up towards the line, Ross Collin and James Doyle clearing away now. Ross Collin, a real progressive horse, and he's going to win really impressively here.